Yesterday on Newsfeed, you would have seen a conversation with the Chief Operating Officer for the National Lotteries Commission, Philemon Lecoiba. Lecoiba confirmed during the interview that while he was the Chief Operating Officer of the National Lotteries Commission, a company run by his wife has received millions of rand from the Commission. He also confirmed another organisation, which is run by his first cousin, had also received money from the Commission. The questions that I put to Lecoiba were based on the reporting of the journalist Raymond Joseph, who's been investigating the Commission for the website Ground Up. First, let's hear a little bit of the interview from yesterday and one of the claims that Lekwaba made. I've got nothing uh, to worry about uh, in my position as the COO because we've got processes that we follow. The NLC has for the past seven years, since I've taken over in, in 2014, receiving clean audits uh, uh, declared by the AG. That's why I'm saying for me to be sitting here and entertaining uh, lies uh, from a beneficiary, a major beneficiary of the National Lottery uh, Commission <clears throat> in the name of Raymond Joseph. I don't think he, it, it is helping the cause. Well, that was the conversation yesterday. Let's speak now to the journalist who's been writing the stories, Raymond Joseph. Raymond, good afternoon to you and thank you for your time. Uh, I think it might be important to just start with this. Letwaba claimed that your reporting making the claims against him which you have, serious claims, was because that you and your family have previously received money from the Commission and now we're no longer receiving money. Is that true? Uh, so, no, it's not true. Really, Stephen, these are lies aimed at deflecting attention from him and from my reporting. Neither my wife nor I have ever received any money from lottery. I can say that categorically. Um, so what's been happening? Uh, Go on. Yeah, and, you know, what I'd rather talk about is, is Mr. Latoire's role as a civil servant and, and what's going on at the lottery. Well, take us through that, because on your reporting, which he confirmed yesterday, an organization run by his wife received money, an organization run by his first cousin received money. You've been reporting on this for some time. What do you believe is going on in the National Lotteries Commission? I'm um, sorry, Andy's brother. And his brother, my mistake. Andy's, well, his brother got a building contract um, for, for a lottery-funded project. Stephen, I've been reporting on this since 28, late 2017, 2018. Um, and what we've uncovered is hundreds of millions of rands of lottery funding gone astray. For example, the lottery has funded six old-age homes, Four rehabs, you're looking at over, you're looking at over 300 million, 350 million rand. Not a single one of them has been completed or is operational. Um, example of a stadium where 11.5 million rand was given, and all they did was put a lick of paint on it. You know, the scary thing, to be honest, is I don't know what I don't know. The more we dig, the more we find the more tip-offs tip we're getting. And this is huge. This is huge. I think ultimately it will run into over a billion, if not more, rand, the way it's going. So the money goes to the National Lotteries Commission. It's supposed to go what I think people used to call good causes. It's supposed to help certain organizations. It's supposed to help NGOs, things like that. Where is it actually going then? I mean, you don't spend 11 million rand to paint a stadium. Where does the rest of the money go? Is it possible to know at this stage? So, Lotopreneurs, um, Mr. Latoiba himself, his family, and, and associate, associates of him have benefited. Now, where the real benefit comes is in infrastructure projects and who gets to do the jobs. So, with those drug rehabs and, um, and the old age homes, um, I have got Mr. Latoiba's brother, um, was director of a company that got the contract to build it. He resigned after my reporting. Um, his cousin took over. His cousin resigned. His cousin's wife took over. He 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 knows he knows all that. And and the money is going on to, into these projects and it's ending up in the pockets of lots of premiers and connected people. I mean not a single one of them. This funding started back in 2016, 2017. Not one of them are completed, Stephen. Not one. Um, 
There's a, Carry on, sorry. there's a really interesting story around Lekwaba himself, and part of the conversation I had with him yesterday was about this, because he was very clear that he hadn't been suspended. There's an investigation into him by an accountancy firm, um, I think it's called XKX. Um, anyway, he's being investigated by <laughs> SK. Then he, he went on special leave, he was very clear he wasn't suspended. The investigation is still ongoing, but now he's come back to the office. And he said to us yesterday, this was to ensure the proper operating of the National Lotteries Commission. Does he have a basis to come back to work if the investigation is still underway? So, so my understanding at the time, although they called it a leave of absence, was a cautionary suspension, because he would have been a person of interest in that investigation. Um, that investigation has never been completed. Um, SKX have already been paid over 9 million rand. They, they, they are, I don't know what they've reported because they were commissioned by the Board of the Lotteries Commission. So I don't know what they've told the Board of the Lotteries Commission. Um, but certainly it's not being made public. It's not being given to the relevant Minister, now, if I can just take a step backwards, a story that I did last week, um, where a previous investigation, which was done by a law firm called Indabella Lamola, at the time Ronald Lamola was the one of two directors of a very very small firm. There, there were two directors, three associates, and two candidate attorneys, and they did a series of reports. The first one was given to Rob Davies, who was then um, a minister at the DTI. He rejected and sent it back with a load of questions. The second report ended up with Ebrahim Rasul, who was then the new minister. Ebrahim Rasul not only rejected it, he said, but it had become quite clear, and it was into, into a drug rehab um, at Denzi Primary Care. This is where his brother's firm got the contract to build this drug rehab. Um, he, he sent it back to them, and he said to me, listen, this is not okay. What you need to do is take steps to recover the money and um, institute criminal, procedure, criminal procedures to get this money back and the people involved. They didn't do that. They then did a third report, by which stage Evram Rasul received it, and he reached the end of his tether. He then hired independent, an independent audit firm to go and investigate it. Um, and by the way, the investigators were two very experienced. One was a former accountant who'd worked for the South African police, and the other one was a top investigator, and they hit the ground running. And based on their first report, there were four companies that they then handed over their, their dossier. One of them was the company in which his wife company, um, within months of her becoming a director, had got 4.8 million rand. I suddenly discovered it was for a sporting event in, in Limpopo. Um, He's, he handed that over to the Hawks, um, and and they and they're the matter. That, and on the, uh, sorry, that investigation in cleared Latrobe of conflict of interest, all kinds of things. So I actually did a story which showed with evidence how a lot of the documentation used to reach those findings were in fact forgeries, forgeries we'd seen before in our reporting that had been used in court cases, had been used in several different places, used to prove that he'd repaid a loan that he took from an NPO that got lottery funding to buy. Sorry, this is uh, Leslie Ramolifo, is, is the other character in it. Um, but he was cleared. But I do not believe that the lottery, the NLC, asked him to go back. My understanding is he decided it's enough. He's going back. During his 17 months absent from the job, his basic salary is 265,000 rand a month. During those 17 months, he earned over 3 million rand. He's gone back without any finding whatsoever because as far as he's concerned, the lottery needs him. He's also, the lottery's gone on a charm offensive, headed up by, by Latoire, handing out, handing out money. They gave Alex FM, um, I think it was two or three million rand to rebuild their studios. They gave 
another three odd million rand to NPOs in Soweto, and now they've given to a bunch in, in KZN. Um, I think it's good that they're helping people affected by, by this, but he's the front man. He's the guy out there representing him. He's currently being investigated by the SIU. He's been investigated by the Hawks. Um, and the South African uh, Chartered, Chartered Account Psychic, Southern Institute of Chartered Accountants, is also investigating a complaint laid by Arta. You know, and uh, I mean, for him to, to go on the way he did and just deflect. There is no question. By the way, he says he has no influence over who gets money, and there are, are distributing agencies that do it. Well, that's not entirely true, because what happened is there's a thing called proactive funding, um, whereby up to 10% of all funds are distributed. And, and this means that you don't apply for money. The lottery, the minister, or the NLC, the minister or the NLC's board can choose something, uh, a, good, a, a cause, like helping people who are affected by the looting and go ahead and, and, and grant money. Now, that doesn't go through the distributing agencies. And, and how that procedure works is very, very hard to, to work out. It's, you know, as my colleague Anton van Sale, who I've worked on many of these stories with, says, is the lottery is, is as transparent as the toilet window. So, so can I ask, can I, no. uh, uh, colourful Mosley can I ask then, I mean, with all of, all of this against him uh, on, on your version, why does nothing stick? So what is becoming very, very clear um, is the, the National Lotteries Commission and its board has got very, very heavy political cover. There's no question of that. Um, I watched, I sat in portfolio committee meetings where they were constantly being defended um, by the ANC, by the ANC who have a majority on it. And something happened last year. I'm not sure what, but an audit came from above and they turned. But they've had heavy political connections. So, you know, I'm not suggesting that Ronald, I have no evidence to prove that Ronald Lamola did anything illegal. You know, all I'm saying is I don't have the evidence. Or oh, that's what happened. Um, Angie Mochecha and her husband, MPOs run by them, have received lottery money. Um, I'm currently, I can't really go into names, but I'm currently working on a story directly linking another cabinet minister to, to Mr. Latwaba and the company, the, the, his company, his family's company, Upbrand. All right. So, Raymond, Raymond Joseph, we'll, we'll leave it there. It's a very interesting story. There's a lot going on in all of this. Raymond Joseph, the journalist, uh, publishing those stories on Ground Up. Thank you very much indeed.